Hello, welcome to a Unity tutorial on rainbow shaders. In the last tutorial, we created a shop menu where you could buy skins. And in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to make a skin. Uh, particularly, we're going to make a rainbow skin where the colors change based off the screen position of the pogo stick. So right now, it's just a solid red, kind of boring. So we'll create a shader, standard surface, call it rainbow. Then we'll create a material, call it rainbow as well, and set it to use custom rainbow. We'll jump into our shader in a text editor, and we're going to start by amending our input struct. So um, in a standard surface shader, the input is basically the variables that your shader uses. Um, so in our case, the screen position gives us information about where the object is on screen. And we're going to use that to color the rainbow. But there's all kinds of other cool uh, shader um, variables that you can pass into the input structure. Um, but for now, we're using the screen position, X and Y. And we're going to use that to set the albedo to a value between black and white. Um, the reason why this works on my example is because my camera is orthographic projection, meaning that the depth is uniform. But if you're using a perspective-based uh, approach, then you're going to need to divide by screen pause.w. I'm editing this after the fact, so things like hue scale uh, you won't have in your code just yet. But I just wanted to mention that if you are doing perspective projection, um, which is most things, you're going to need to divide by the w. Um, so now we can see that in action. We go from black to white as we go from left to right along the screen. Um, so this is good. Now we know where we are on the screen. And um, as a fun fact, this surface code actually runs for every pixel on the pogo stick. So now in order to get the color that we want, red, green, and blue, it's not really going to help us. We need hue saturation value because that way we can um, smoothly interpolate over a hue value, which will change the color in more of a linear and cyclical fashion. So I didn't write this code. Um, someone else wrote this algorithm. And it is going to, I found it on Stack Overflow, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but it's going to convert our hue saturation value to red, green, and blue. So again, we want the hue. We want to be able to set the hue. Um, but the shader wants red, green, and blue. So that's what this helper function is going to do. And you can define any helper functions within a shader. Um, I think order matters. Uh, I can't say for sure, but I, we'll put it before the surface shader. So in, as in the previous example, we used a, just the chords.x to set a value between black and white. Now we're going to use chords.x to define the hue of the color. And as for the saturation and value, we'll just set those to 1. Those values will give you either a darker or a lighter shade um, based on your needs. We'll use our helper function to get the red, green, and blue, assign it to our albedo, which is our base color. And we click play, and we should see that in action. We have a rainbow base shader. As we hop over to the right side of the screen, we get a hue closer to pink. And from the left side of the screen, we get uh, a red. And towards the middle of the screen, we get kind of cooler hues like blue and Cyan. So that's pretty much it. Uh, one thing I'd like to add to this is the ability to add repeated rainbows, um, basically modifying the scaling. So if we multiply the chords x by a hue scale, that's going to be just a floating point. We'll set it to fixed. Um, and fixed just means it uses the least amount of bytes possible. Um, so we can be a little more efficient on the graphics card. Uh, we'll create a property for hue scale um, so that we can change it in the inspector. It's going to be a float. So now if we look at our material in the inspector, we should see our hue scale variable. Uh, and it'll have a nice little uh, text field. So we can scale that up. And now all of a sudden we're getting rainbow bands. Um, so our hue is kind of repeating over time. So we'll get just a stronger rainbow effect. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and so I think that concludes this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you to create your own rainbow shaders or other screen space-based effects.